Do you enjoy fermented foods like cheese, salami, kefir, yogurt, sauerkraut, pickles, maybe even kimchi? Well, in this video, I'm going to be making kimchi for the first time using these beautiful fermentation jars. So come along with me as I go through the process of how to make kimchi. Kimchi is fermented cabbage. You can use really any kind of vegetables you may have in your refrigerator. If you had some radish or daikon, carrots. Um, today, I'm gonna be making kimchi with Napa cabbage. But why am I making kimchi? It's highly nutritious for you. There's so many good bacteria in it and probiotics, which is excellent for aiding in digestion, um, helps your immune system and fermented foods helps protect against disease. And they say when you have a healthy microbiome in your gut, then you feel better, you digest better, you have more energy. So there's so many benefits to it. And when you compare probiotic supplements versus like a tablespoon of sauerkraut juice, sauerkraut juice has trillions of CFUs, which is colony formed units. Whereas probiotic supplements, they have like millions and billions, not even trillions of CFUs. So that's like a great comparison. And why not just make it yourself? It's something that you can eat with meat. So what I'm gonna be using is this fermentation jar. It's by Sarah Kirsten. And what's cool is um, it has a water seal and these weights that come with it. So I'm gonna be using this to ferment my cabbage. So the ingredients I'm going to be using is about three to four pounds of cabbage. I have this green one that I got at the farmer's market. This gorgeous, purple Napa cabbage. Look at that color. They say it tastes just like the regular Napa cabbage. A bunch of green onions. You could use regular garlic, but today I'm gonna to be using some garlic scapes that I got at the farmer's market as well. Some ginger. So make sure your vegetables are organic, ideally from the farmer's market. Some kombu that I soaked for one hour in spring water. Redmond real salt. Gochugaru, which is Korean red pepper flakes, and of course, some spring water that I have in here that I'm gonna be using for the brine water. Now real quick, I just wanna show you um, where you can find kombu. I get it at my local health food store at the organic grocery market. Uh, this brand, Main Coast Sea Vegetables, they call it kelp and then it says Wild Atlantic Kombu, so this is what it would look like. And it's gonna come dried and you're gonna have to rehydrate it. If you have a hard time finding gochugaru if there's no Asian or Korean market, um, I was surprised that mother-in-law brand, which they actually make like gochujang, um, red pepper paste and stuff that I like to add to my bibimbap, but they actually now make Korean chili flakes. So I got this um, in Montana at the health food store, at the good food store. And so they sell that as well. So this is what you might be able to find in your local health food grocery store. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be saving the larger leaves to cover up the, um, the cabbage or the kimchi. And you'll see what I do with them. But yeah, just make sure to save some of the large leaves. I'm gonna take the root off. And obviously with like sauerkraut, it's shredded. Kimchi, if you've had kimchi, they're usually in like one inch pieces. Table's shaking. I love this purple color. And then I'm just gonna cut it in half again. I'm gonna throw it all in this bowl. And it's, if, it's, if you think it's too big, it, it's really not. Um, it's going to wilt down. And if you've had real traditional kimchi, sometimes like the leaves are like this, right? They're just like packed in whole, <laughs> rubbed with a red pepper paste. But this, the method I'm using is gonna be a little different than the traditional halmoni style, but it's still gonna be fermenting. I'm gonna cut this off.
Okay, now for the green onions. You can also use regular onions as well, if that's all you've got. I'm gonna cut out the roots, roughly chopping. This can totally not be perfect. Okay, now for the garlic scapes. If you've never had garlic scapes, I mean, I cooked it a few days ago in some fried rice and like, I feel like it's like a long bean plus a green onion plus a garlic. It's not actually not as strong, but you do feel that heat coming off of it. But I love it because it's nice and crunchy and adds really pretty color. You could totally use regular garlic cloves as well. Now for the ginger. So to peel ginger, now I only need a quarter of a cup, but to peel ginger, I'm just gonna break a knob off first. You just use your spoon and you apply pressure and you just peel it with a spoon. It's so much easier, but yeah, and it totally comes off just like that. If you buy, you know, ginger comes in pretty big pieces most of the time you're not using the whole piece. So the best way to store it is you can put the whole thing in the fridge, which is gonna make it last a lot longer than on your counter. Um, you could always thinly slice it and then put it in your freezer, which will make it last even longer. And then when you're ready to use it in a smoothie or juice or stir fry, it's already sliced <laughs> and ready to go. I like the spoon method because you can get through in between the, the nubs. Now I'm just going to be chopping it up. And now you could also, in her recipe book, Sarah Kirsten's, she said you could, she just puts it in a blender with a little bit of water and then pours it. So that's a speedy way if you didn't want to cut it up or if you're not a fan of, you know, getting pieces of ginger in your kimchi. This is about a quarter of a cup, so we had this much left. Look at all the pretty colors. And then as for the kombu, just cut it into slices here. That's gonna add some nice flavor and put in some great minerals in the kimchi. So there you go, that's gonna go there. Now we're gonna get mixing. So I've got a Dutch oven to mix everything together since I don't have a big enough bowl. And I'm just gonna mix everything I chopped up together. Let's see if I can get this. I'm going to be doing it in batches with some of the gochukaru, not the salt. So I'm just going to mix it up with my hands. A lot of it has been coated with the gochukaru. Ooh, that's heavy. I'm going to be making the, uh, the brine water. Two tablespoons of the Redmond Real Salt. Some helpful tips when you're making brine water, make sure it's with some unrefined salt, sea salt, Himalayan salt. Try not using any iodized table salt. So how much water you're going to be using is just enough to submerge the veggies. We're going to be packing in our cabbage. If you have big hands and your hands don't fit, you can probably use a spoon or something like that to stuff it. Now you can see it's really packed in there to the top. And then I'm going to layer some of the larger leaves. over the vegetables, kind of like a blanket. There's one leaf. Okay, then I'm going to place the weights right on top. There's one half moon there, as you can see. Press the other moon down. Put 
There we go. Now I'm going to be adding the brine water just enough to submerge the vegetables. And you want to make sure you don't use tap water. That stuff has like fluoride and chlorine. You want to use ideally some spring water. Now with the lid, I am going to close it up. So the cool thing about these jars is that there's a water seal. The seal is created when this moat-like rim of the jar is filled with water. So now we're gonna be filling the moat with water. So that is one jar. All right, so I've got my large jar here with me. weights on like so there you go so can you see that that's nice and packed in there now now for the brine so for the large jar it's going to be six tablespoons I'm going to just mix it in with my fingers and it's just going to be enough water to cover and submerge the vegetables. So this is four cups. I'm probably going to need more. Whoops. Okay. Got some more spring water. I'm just going to pour it in here to catch the salt. So far it's been about nine cups, still not submerged. Now that we have everything submerged, I'm going to close this and I'm going to fill the moat three quarters of the way. What happens during fermentation is lactic acid gets created through fermentation. And some vegetables already have some lactic acid, like cabbage. Cabbage juice is full of lactic acid, and that's what makes fermented foods sour. It makes the food very safe to eat, and lactic acid is like a preservative, just like alcohol, except it doesn't make you drunk. And at the same time, bacteria that's getting created in these fermentation jar is creating some vitamin C, B vitamins, and they break down anti-nutrients, which allows simulation of the absorption of minerals. That's why I love fermented foods and eating it alongside with my meals. So I'm gonna go put these in my kitchen inside where it's going to stay stationary for at least five weeks. Look out for a part two video of how my kimchi turned out. If you have any questions regarding nutrition, cooking, movement, training, go ahead and comment in the comment section below and I'd be happy to make a video just for you. If you like this video, click the like button and share with your friends and family. Thanks for watching. Now get your fermentation on.